Now at 6 o'clock on WKYT this morning, a deadly crash on Interstate 75 leaves two dead and two more injured. We'll have the latest details coming up. An overnight shooting in Lexington leaves one man dead, and now police are looking for the shooter. And a fallen firefighter is being honored with four scholarships in his name. That's all coming up on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday, the 1st of October. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is in this morning for Mike Linden. Good morning to you, Jimmy. And good morning. He's not here for a great reason. He's getting married later today. Problem is, weather's not going to be fantastic for it, Michelle. That's the issue that he runs into. We are in the 50s out there this morning, upper 40s, low and mid 50s. So chill in the air. But we've had this chill so long. I think we're all about to get used to it. And if you haven't gotten used to it yet, you'll have a couple more chances this week. And we're actually going to warm things up next week. Here's what it looks like uh, on our Defender Radar Network clouds around. And of course, some light showers have passed through parts of our area. Let's look at the hour by hour run through the day today and into the night. And you can see chances of showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms, some gusty showers as well. And daytime highs should only get up to a right around 67 degrees. And then the rain chances will start to die out some as we get toward the latter part of the uh, evening and into tonight. And then we head into tomorrow, and I think it's only an isolated chance of some showers. Let me show you the high resolution uh, radar. We'll go through the morning here, and you can see how they start filling in by around 10, 11 o'clock. We'll start tracking some rain into central Kentucky. And again, this is high resolution, meaning that every hour it updates and it only goes out 12 hours. So. It takes the latest image and snapshot of what's going on in the atmosphere and spits it out in data form. Six o'clock today, still dealing with some scattered showers out to our west along Interstate 65. Some of that will continue wrapping into our area because we have been tracking that area of low pressure for days now. It's been with us. But it's about to finally leave, and I will track it leaving coming up for you in just a few minutes, Michelle. Thank you, Jimmy. New this morning, two people are dead and two others are in the hospital after a bad crash on Interstate 75. It happened just before 1 this morning on I-75 southbound at exit 120. Now that's near the Fayette-Scott County line. Traffic on the southbound side was closed for hours to clean up the accident. Two people are in the hospital this morning after that bad wreck. Now we know the two people died in the crash. Traffic is moving on I-75 southbound, and police say two cars were going very fast on the highway. <clears throat> excuse me, when they collided, one car hit a wall while the other crashed into the emergency strip on the side of the road. Police say both the drivers of the cars died at the scene. There were two other passengers in the van that were taken to UK hospital. We are told one has life-threatening injuries while the other one has minor injuries. Police say they believe speed was a factor in the crash. New this morning, one person is dead after being shot in Lexington. It happened around 2 this morning on Unity Drive, which is just off of South Broadway. Police say an argument broke out at a party and someone fired shots. Now we're told one man was shot multiple times. Police tell us he later died at UK Hospital. Police do not have a description of the suspect. The victim's name has not been released. Also in Scott County, investigators are looking into a deadly motorcycle crash. The crash happened last night on Connector Road near Old Oxford Road in Georgetown. Police say for some reason the man riding the motorcycle lost control in a curve and crashed. The coroner says that man was not wearing a helmet and died at the scene. Police tell us the road can be dangerous for drivers who are not used to it. Um, it is a kind of a steep grade, um, and we, we, we have several wrecks at that, that particular location. The man's name has not been released. Now, the clown sightings have not stopped here in central Kentucky. The latest sighting happened on a trail near the intersection of Bypass Road and Colby Road in Winchester on Thursday night. Police say a person in a clown mask jumped out of the tree line and tried to take a woman into the woods. Police say the woman fought the man off and got away. Now, one person who visits the trail all the time says the victim is not the only one in danger. Even if it's people just joking around, it's, I think it's a real, it's a, it's a concern because Somebody's going to get hurt. Either it, whether it be the clown or somebody, you know, these clowns, one of them's going to get shot. Winchester police say this is the first clown sighting report they have received. Now, a mother and son are in jail this morning after police say they were living in a vacant Franklin County home. LaRonda Ross and her son Charles Jackson faced burglary and forgery charges. Police say neighbors became suspicious after they moved into a home that had been abandoned for 20 years. 
Police say a family living in California owns that home. Now, there are tax liens on the home, and the squatters knew how to pay those taxes. Police say this is a very strange case. Very weird and not something that, that we deal with on a regular basis. In fact, I, I've been on the department here 20-some years, and I had, don't ever recall us ever dealing with anything like this before. So there is now a notice on the door that says the home is not livable. Both Ross and Jackson are expected in court early next week. Also in Franklin County, a man caught selling heroin in Frankfurt is now heading to prison. Brandon Campbell of Cleveland was arrested in March and charged with two counts of heroin distribution. After a three-day trial, he was found guilty on both counts. His sentencing is set for February 1st. Lexington police have teamed up with the U.S. Attorney's Office for a new plan to fight the drug epidemic. Now, as part of the partnership, Lexington police have added officers to the department's narcotics unit. They're also focusing more on investigating overdose cases. They'll be working under a U.S. Attorney's Office initiative. It focuses on prosecuting drug dealers and their suppliers who have been connected to overdoses. We're treating overdose scenes differently than we have, not only as a medical condition or an issue, but also as a criminal investigation. Not criminalizing the person, but the individual, the predator that is supplying the heroin. Lexington police say there have been more than 100 overdose deaths in the city so far this year. Officers are also carrying Narcan, a drug used to reverse the effects of an overdose. Police in California have released two videos showing the fatal shooting of an unarmed black man by police. The release of the footage comes after days of protest in a San Diego suburb. Chris Martinez has the latest from Los Angeles. Surveillance video from a taco shop drive through shows the start of Tuesday's confrontation. 38-year-old Alfred Alongo is seen pacing in the parking lot as two officers move in his direction. Cell phone video shows what happened next. Police say Alongo drew an object from his pocket and pointed it in the officer's direction, taking what they call a shooting stance. That's when one officer fired his taser, the other fired fatal shots. It turns out Alongo was holding an electronic cigarette device like this one. His sister says she initially called 911 to get help for Alongo, who was behaving erratically. When police arrived, they say he refused to follow their commands. So non compliant, so won't get his hand out of his pocket, uh, walking all over the parking lot. Police Chief Jeff Davis decided to release the video after protests turned violent. We hope that any demonstrations will remain peaceful. Again, that was the in intention of releasing this video. The NAACP says that was the right thing to do. Full disclosure to the public builds trust and it demonstrates respect. City leaders are urging calm as police continue their investigation. Chris Martinez, CBS News. Now that family declined to see the video before it was made public. A fallen Estill County firefighter now has scholarships set up in his name. Chase Clevenger died in December, just hours after working a fire in Estill County. Now there are four scholarships in his name to help send firefighters to training and two for EKU graduates. The scholarships are $500 each, meant to help with cost of licensing and applying for jobs. Clevenger's wife says these scholarships are a great way to give back. I always knew he was wonderful, of course, you know, but uh, to know the uh, impact that he had on so many other people, it made me want to do even more to continue that. Next Sunday, Clevenger's name will be added to the National Fallen Firefighter Memorial in Maryland. His friends and co-workers tell us they plan on being there. Now let's take a look at what's happening around our area on this first Saturday of October. Today is the annual Race for the Cure here in Lexington. The race starts at 9 o'clock this morning, starting at the Robert Stevens Courthouse Plaza. WKYT is a sponsor for the event. It raises money for breast cancer research, and registration costs $25. There will be a survivor parade a half an hour before the race. Now much of East Main Street between South MLK and Shinaway Road will be closed today until 1 p.m. WKYT's Amber Philpot and Sam Dick will join us live at 7.30 this morning to talk about the event. And check out the third annual Walk and Roll Spina Bifida event here in Lexington. It starts at 9.30 at Shriners Hospital on Richmond Road. WKYT's Barbara Bailey will be there emceeing the event. It raises money for families in need who are dealing with spina bifida. Kentucky has twice as many births with spina bifida than any other state. 
A zombie Nerf war in Lexington is trying to break a world record. It starts at 6 tonight at Jacobson Park. Organizers say it will be a two hour game and everyone will get the chance to play as both a zombie and survivor. Now, the group is trying to break a Guinness world record for the largest zombie event ever organized. And over in Nicholasville, you can check out the River Blast at First Vineyard. That's off of Sugar Creek Pike. The event runs from 4 until 9 o'clock tonight, and you can explore the history of the Kentucky River, play games, enjoy arts and crafts, and even a concert. Admission is $5. The event ends with the last fireworks display of the year. Your time now is 6:10 on this Saturday morning. WKYT this morning is just getting started. A Clark County teacher is used to teaching her students lessons, but find out what lesson her student decided to teach her. That story is coming up in about 10 minutes. And Big Blue Madness fans finally got the tickets they had been waiting for. That's coming up after Jim's forecast. And they finally got to dry up and get out of the chill that was hanging out in the air because we have certainly been there the past few days. And the chilly showers continue again today. We will track them hour by hour next for you. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Low and mid 50s with a couple of 40s uh, also peppered in there this morning. It is uh, a chilly start to October. We wouldn't have it any other way around here, though. We got a little too cool too fast, and Mother Nature's about to balance things out. So we'll go through the rest of this weekend well below average, and then we get into next week, and things are looking much, much better. We'll get uh, warmer out there. It's 55 degrees in Lexington this morning with clouds hanging around. A little misty, perhaps, in, in some cases as well. We can look at our, we'll put it into motion so you can see the, how the clouds are circulating still around an area of low pressure. I've talked about this. I worked on Monday, worked on Thursday, worked yesterday. We've been talking about it for days. It has been around. We've tracked that area of low pressure. But the good news is it's starting to lift away from us. And as it does, it'll take that chill in the air with it because it'll allow for us to see more sunshine, which we need. And it'll also keep the uh, rain away for a few days. We'll break things down here in seven days, just a moment, so you can see where we're headed. Watch the low, though, as it escapes our presence uh, as we head through the rest of the weekend here. Showers will be on the move later today, so we will run into a chance. Low lifts off to the north, and as it does, rain will start to disappear, except on Sunday, an isolated or a stray shower. There you see them popping up there will be a possibility around here. Then things will get on the clear side going into your Monday. A much better looking afternoon and evening. There you see the clouds starting to disappear, meaning that we run into more sunshine and we'll also get into some warmer temperatures. Just a little cool for the season, but we're getting there soon. Uh, hour by hour run of our temperatures. There you see the chill. Mid 60s, upper 60s that will be showing up again today. Now, some folks in southern and eastern Kentucky might see a little more sunshine, so it'll allow them to warm up a little bit more. And we'll warm up even more so into Sunday with more folks in the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. Seven day forecast time now. This is where we have uh, our rain chances, of course. Showers, thunderstorms possible today. Stray shower tomorrow, then Monday through Wednesday. Looking a whole lot better out there with highs 73 all the way up to 77. But look what happens Thursday, Friday, Michelle. We're going to do it all again toward the end of the week. We'll get cool yet again. But what a nice week we have in store. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Worth the wait. And, you know, we needed a little bit of chill, you know, to put us in the, the right mood going into October. Well, don't tell Mike Linden that. He's getting married tonight. <laughs> He's not going to like this weather, Jimmy. Hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, he's going to blame you. And his wife is, too. So yes. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so the wait is over for hundreds of UK fans. These people waited days to get their hands on Big Blue Manus tickets. Yes. Outside in that rainy cold. Oh, very chilly out there. UK handed out the tickets at 10 last night. In 28 minutes, the tickets were gone. 1,300 people waited in line to get the tickets. One couple even got married while waiting. <laughs> the couple says they found a new tradition. Every year, our anniversary, I'm sure we're going to be right here. It wouldn't be anywhere else, but right here supporting my cats. They need to get her some blue roses. Uh, yeah, Big Blue Madness is scheduled for October 14th at 7 o'clock. If you can't make it to practice, it will be televised on the SEC network. Isn't that something? It is something. <laughs> would you ever do that? Would you and your wife renew your vows at Big Blue Madness well, Camp Out? Well, of course I would. Whatever's no, cool. No, you wouldn't. You're right. I want to do it. <laughs> he 
he's not telling the truth. No, you're right. No. We've got a whole lot more <laughs> coming up for you on WKYT this morning. When we come back, a Clark County teacher is learning a surprise lesson on love and compassion. But before we go to break, tonight's Powerball jackpot is $70 million. And Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot, $35 million. We'll be right back. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. So when the school year starts, there's a lot to learn, and sometimes lessons are not always taught from a book. Teachers have the task of making sometimes tough material be more understandable. But what happens when the teacher is given an assignment not even she understands? WKYT's Amber Philpot shows you a lesson on love and compassion one Clark County teacher won't soon forget. What's an adjective? Who can tell me? Raise your hand. Today's lesson, descriptive words. If the assignment here was to describe sixth grade teacher Christy Blackwell, the answer would be easy. She's one of like my favorite teachers. She can make any activity fun for us. From students to staff at Baker Intermediate, it seems Mrs. Blackwell easily makes an impression on everyone she meets. She is just so easy to talk to. She makes you feel like when you're talking to her that you're the only one in the world. She just makes you feel very special. It was that very reason why this school year, those who know and love Mrs. Blackwell are working on an assignment that reaches far beyond the classroom. We're making cards. Returning from summer break has been one of determination for Blackwell. Life changed for this 34 year old wife and mother of twin boys while on vacation in June. I started stuttering and I started having a seizure. And my husband called 911 and I was sent to the hospital. I don't remember anything. And I had six seizures that night. Blackwell had a brain tumor and needed immediate surgery. Doctors diagnosed her with brain cancer and started her on radiation. But despite the battle ahead, nothing was going to stop her from getting back to her students when school started, even if it was for just a month. This summer has been a whirlwind and um, it was a lot of anxiety, a lot of sadness, and I needed normalcy. I needed something to come back to and something to hope for. And that's when the subject for these teachers turned to how do we help. They started a GoFundMe page, sold these Be Well Mrs. Blackwell bracelets, and they've seen their students take up the cause as well. And we're going to make her a quilt, so like to have it on her lap, because my uncle, he had cancer, and he said the chemo room was really like cold, so we were making her a lap blanket. That blanket was finished just in time for Mrs. Blackwell before she had to leave her beloved students to start chemo. These kids are learning a lesson that they could never learn in a book. And they're learning something, they're learning an amazing life lesson. They're learning to, to think of someone else other than themselves. Compassion, empathy, and love. None of it in Mrs. Blackwell's original lesson plan this year, but it seems she is teaching a valuable lesson to her students in the way she's handling her own tough assignments. I mean, I hope that they can see that no matter what you, what struggles you go through, you can be determined and get through them with the help and love. And I mean, I've been shown so much support. Christy Blackwell says she is ready to fight. She will undergo extensive rounds of chemo over the next several months. Last week, her students and fellow staff showered her with love before leaving for treatment. For more on how you can help, go to WKYT.com. Your time now is 623. There's still more to come on WKYT This Morning. Sports is coming up next. It is the weekend, the first one of October, and the first day of October, as a matter of fact. And we are still tracking that chill in the air that has been with us for most of the week since Wednesday. Showers have been showing up, and they will show up again later today. Not out there at the moment, but we'll watch them increase today. But the good news is, with rain chances, we'll watch them decrease as we head into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Fantastic new week. We just have to get through this wet weekend. Now let's check in with Brian Milam and see what's going on in the world of sports. In Tuscaloosa tonight, Kentucky will be in a hostile environment against the number one ranked team in the country, and it will be up to Steven Johnson to direct the Kentucky offense. Since replacing Drew Barker in the New Mexico State game, Johnson has done a pretty good job, but he'll need everybody's help at Alabama. I say the same thing, you know, with Drew. All of with Drew, we were ready with Drew. Uh, but now that Steven's up, you know, we we're just ready to have his back. You know, him being a new quarterback in there, uh, try to take some of the pressure off him by going in there, trying to, you know, trying to 
make it relax, to try to relax it a little bit, a little, and just just play up to his ball. You really can't make any mistakes going into the, uh, Alabama playing them because they're going to be on their A game as well. I mean, they've got, like I said, phenomenal players, um, and we'll just have to go out there and play 100% um, with no mistakes, no turnovers, and be able to move the ball efficiently. Number one Alabama in Bryant Denny Stadium. That game is tonight at 7 o'clock. You'll see it on ESPN. And as we told you yesterday, John Calipari announcing longtime assistant coach John Robick was moving to a new role as special assistant to the head coach. That position was held by Joel Justice, who now becomes an assistant coach. Calipari said Robick will still be his right hand man, but per NCAA rules, won't be allowed to coach players on the court. Justice begins his third season with the Wildcats. The Cincinnati Reds say Brian Price will return as manager next season. Price and the Reds agreeing to a one year contract with a team option for 2018. And the entire coaching staff has been offered contracts as well for 2017. The Reds, 67 and 92 in last place in the National League Central, but pretty much split even since the All-Star break. And congratulations in order for Lee K. Howard and his wife Kristen. And they had their first child yesterday morning, Margaret Bly Howard, 6 pounds, 12 ounces. Welcome to the world. Little Margaret, we look forward to seeing you soon. That is a look at sports. Enjoy your game and enjoy your weekend. Now at 6.30 on WKYT this morning, two people are dead after an early morning crash and two more are in the hospital. We'll have the latest details coming up. An argument turns violent in Lexington. Police say one person is dead after a shooting and they're still looking for the suspected gunman. And a Kentucky politician is not backing down after his controversial comments about President Obama and his family. That's all coming up on WKYT this morning, Saturday. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. It is Saturday, October 1st already. Can't believe it's October. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell joins us in this morning. He's filling in for Mike Linden. Mike's got a big day today, right? Yeah, a pretty big day. It's wedding day. Wedding day. One that's going to be a little on the cool side with some showers kind of thrown into the mix as well for all of us out there. Uh, upper 40s all the way down into Middlesbrough. And I bet in many of those valley locations across eastern Kentucky, probably in the 40s as well, where you don't have actual observation points. But uh, low 50s also coming in. Mid 50s here into Lexington. Area of low pressure that has plagued the area the past few days continues to do so. Still spinning, throwing the clouds and the showers into our skies today. Hour by hour, we head through the day today. Chances of rain will increase, especially as we head into the afternoon and into the evening hours, but they'll start to break down those we head toward the nighttime period and into tomorrow. Only a few showers expected then. I'll break all of that down with the uh, updated hour by hour forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Jimmy. New this morning, two people are dead and two others are in the hospital after a bad crash on Interstate 75. It happened just before one this morning on I-75 southbound at exit 120. Now that's near the Fayette Scott County line. Traffic on the southbound side was closed for hours to clean up the accident. Two people are in the hospital this morning after that crash. We know that two people died in the crash. Traffic is moving again on I-75 southbound. Now police say two cars were going very fast on the highway when they collided. One car hit a wall while the other crashed into the emergency strip on the side of the road. Police say both the drivers of the cars died on scene. There were two other passengers in the van that were taken to UK hospital. We're told one has life-threatening injuries while the other one has minor injuries. New this morning, one person is dead after being shot in Lexington. It happened around 2 this morning on Unity Drive, which is just off of South Broadway. Police say an argument broke out at a party and someone fired shots. We're told one man was shot multiple times. Now, police tell us he later died at UK Hospital. Police do not have a description of the suspect. The victim's name has not been released at this time. Investigators in Boyle County are still trying to figure out how a man died. Police found 72 year old Dawson Sears dead in his Danville home. Officers spent hours collecting evidence and information. They also knocked on doors and had a yellow car towed. But police have not released much information. Neighbors say they are a little worried. I don't think there's anything for neighbors to be concerned about, but like I said, we are very, very early in this investigation. Neighbors do say that Sears was a very nice and mild mannered person. An autopsy for Sears is scheduled for sometime this morning. 
A Knott County family is mourning the loss of two children who died in a fire. The fire started on Highway 550 in the Lackey community. Investigators say two adults and a child escaped the burning home, but the fire killed twin four year old boys. Neighbors say they're doing what they can to support the family. It's going to be hard on this community. I mean, I've known them for two months, and they're really nice, nice people. Firefighters are still trying to figure out what caused that fire, but neighbors say the family told them it may have been an electrical problem. A South Central Kentucky community says goodbye to a young Kentucky State Trooper. Trooper Mason Flynn died on Monday after falling while trying to help his friend put a roof on a barn. Yesterday, nearly 1,000 family and friends gathered at his funeral to say goodbye. One person says Flynn was a bright spot in the lives of everyone he met. Mason was certainly a man of integrity. He was only 24 years old, but during that time, he, uh, he impacted a lot of people's lives. Trooper Flynn's family says that any donations be made to the Shop with the Trooper program at the London Post of State Police. A reward is now being offered as investigators try to find the person who set a large trap that injured a cat. Jesmond County Animal Care and Control says the Humane Society of the United States has posted a $5,000 reward. Investigators say someone found the cat with its legs stuck in the trap around Williamsburg Drive in Nicholasville. The cat did lose some toes. Jesmond County Animal Care and Control is also asking for donations to help pay for the cat's care. A beauty pageant winner continues to be one of the stops, top stories of the presidential campaign. Donald Trump is continuing to push back against claims he fat shamed a former Miss Universe by suggesting his rival, Hillary Clinton, is using her as a political tool. CBS's Craig Boswell has the latest from the White House. Donald Trump stood inside a replica of the Oval Office at the Gerald Ford Museum in Grand Rapids, Michigan. His visit to the late president's home state came just hours after the Republican nominee launched into a third day of attacks against a former Miss Universe. In a series of pre-dawn tweets, Trump called Venezuelan native Alicia Machado disgusting and urged followers to look for a sex tape. Machado has said Trump called her Miss Piggy after she gained weight. Hillary Clinton responded hours later. What kind of man stays up all night to smear a woman with lies and conspiracy theories? On November 8th, show up and vote. Trump rallied a crowd later Friday, but didn't mention the tweets. He raised questions about his microphone from Monday's debate after the debate commission acknowledged sound problems in the hall, but not on television. It was bad. I wonder why it was bad. Think of that. I wonder why it was bad. Clinton spent the day in Florida, where a new poll taken after the debate has her ahead of Trump by four points. At an afternoon rally, Clinton said Trump's tweets say exactly who he is. It proves yet again that he is temperamentally unfit to be president and commander in chief. Clinton also called for greater participation in national and community service. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. A candidate for Kentucky's State House is making no apologies for shocking images found on his Facebook page. Dan Johnson is the Bishop of the Heart of Fire Church in Southeast Louisville. He's also the Republican challengers for Kentucky's 49th District. Johnson has recently come under fire for several images found on his Facebook page, such as a photo of a chimpanzee labeled as a baby picture of President Obama. Another image had ape-like features photoshopped onto pictures of the Obama family. Johnson says the images are meant to be taken as satire. It wasn't meant to be racist. I can tell you that. My history is good there. Um, and uh, I can see how people would be offended in that. I wasn't trying to offend anybody. Uh, but I think, you know, it, Facebook's entertaining. Johnson's Facebook page also contains numerous images of the Confederate flag and posts critical of Islam. Several of the images have been deleted. Now, the chairman of the Republican Party of Kentucky released a statement saying, quote, Johnson's comments and social media posts are outrageous and have no place in today's political discourse. In a statement, the Kentucky Democratic Party called for Johnson to drop out of the race, saying the only decent option would be for this candidate to withdraw from seeking a role as a lawmaker and representative of the people of Kentucky. State leaders are asking for more time to comply with a federal real ID law. WDRB TV reports Kentucky sent a revised request to the Department of Homeland Security. The state's waiver expires October 10th. Now, without an extension, Kentuckians won't be able to use a driver's license to enter a federal, federal facility. And if the state doesn't upgrade its IDs by January of 2018, Kentuckians cannot use their license to board a domestic flight. 
Now let's take a look at what's happening today around Central Kentucky. Over in Woodford County, they're holding the annual Fall Festival at Boyd Orchards Farm. The festival starts at 9.30 this morning and runs until 7 o'clock tonight. You can take a hayride, pick some apples or pumpkins, listen to live music, and play on the playground. For those who choose to play, kids are $12 and adults are 8 Hay rides will cost extra money, and I'm sure those are backwards there. Tomorrow is the last day of the festival. And today in Richmond, registration begins for the second annual Officer Daniel Ellis Memorial 5K. Registration opens up at 8 o'clock. Cost is $25 for adults and $15 for kids. The price goes up if you don't register by March 1st. The race will take place on April 22nd of next year. In Lexington, you can welcome fall in the third annual Autumn Bazaar. It is the celebration of Lexington's thriving art scene with a collection of crafts, clothing, and food. It starts at noon and runs until 9 o'clock tonight at Country Boy Brewing. More than 50, or rather 40, vendors will be participating in the event. There will also be beer, coffee, and freshly made donuts. And also in Lexington, today is the second annual Halloween Puckin Bash. It will be held from noon until 4 at the Kentucky National Guard Armory in Lexington. It is a fundraising event for Bluegrass Pug Rescue. Admission is $5, but children 10 and under are free. 100% of the proceeds go toward the Pug Rescue Center. And bring your dogs. All breeds are welcome. Your time now is 641 on the Saturday morning. There's still plenty to come on WKYT this morning. When we come back, we'll show you all the fun out of Battle for the Saddle and how well our own Sean Moody did. This is coming up after Jim's forecast. <laughs> I'm looking very forward to see how well he did. We are tracking chilly showers again today across most of central Kentucky, but I do see relief in sights. We will track that as well coming up. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. It's Saturday, the first one of October and the first day of October as well. And we are going to be tracking more of what would feel more like mid to late October around here with some of the cool temperatures that will be hanging out with us. Let's get right to it. Today is your Saturday shower, maybe even a thunderstorm possible out there. Very breezy and still on the cool side, at least today. Sunday, small chance of showers will remain in the area. Just a few, not a big deal. Temperatures probably up just a few degrees, but on Monday, it's the beginning of a nice, comfortable warm up that will settle in for most of the region. So get ready for that. And that returns us to normal, which is low to mid 70s around here. It's 56 this morning, 54 in Danville, 52 Somerset. London comes in at 50. Clouds, that's where you find most of the 50s. You get into where the skies have been clear, you get upper 40s and low 50s to our south and to our east because most of the heat that would be trapped by the cloud cover is gone. Area of low pressure sitting and spinning for days continues to do that out there this morning. Some showers showing up across southern Illinois will kind of turn the bend here and then eventually rotate right into central Kentucky, giving us a chance of rain later on today. Out ahead of it, some of the rain will start to kind of pile up, so we will see more showers with it. Watch as we head through time of the hour by hour. You see the rain coming into play there toward Owensboro and then wrapping around and gets a bit of an enhancement later today, giving us chances of rain into the afternoon and evening hours. 61 at 2 o'clock today. We'll wrap it on into 5, 6, 7 o'clock, and you still see some of the showers around the area. When we head into the overnight, clouds are still with us as we go into Sunday. And a few isolated showers will be possible on uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, but temperatures are up because we have less rain around. And I think we'll also have more peaks of sunshine coming into play, and then we're just in pretty good shape once we get beyond that. So a uh, much better looking forecast trying to come at us here going into next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, especially before another front gets here. But we have the chances of showers and thunderstorms out there today, kind of a cool and raw day. Same thing on Sunday, but a little improvement there. And then next week, uh, as I mentioned, very pleasant stuff coming our way. It looks beautiful. Normal. Normal yes. is a good place to be. Oh, good. And that's, that's where we're going. So. Well, I like that forecast, Jimmy. It's something normal. <laughs> a friendly battle at the Kentucky Horse Park raised money for a good cause. Yeah, celebrities, if you can call them that, <clears throat> including TV personalities, uh, Carson Kressley and jockey Chris McCarran took part in a battle in the saddle. They competed in team with teams to see who could pin a group of cattle at a far, uh, at the far end of the arena in the quickest time. Battle in the saddle raises money for the Kentucky Horse Park Foundation.
I think it's awesome that there's so many people out here that are trying to do their part also taking care of the horse and supporting the horses in Lexington. I think it's awesome. And you see Sean Moody right well, there. Well, look at there. Ooh, and Dee and Stevens, they were all a part of it uh, as they were saddled up and ready to go and uh, herding that cattle. <laughs> I'd like to see Jimmy do this. <laughs> You'll not see me do it. <laughs> Come on, it's for a good cause. Well, it is for a good cause, but I can't ride a horse. <laughs> sure you can. I guess you can I... do anything you put your mind to, Jimmy. That's the positive message of this Saturday. Yes. It's a very good message. <laughs> the time is now 647. We'll take a look at your money when we come back. A safety recall from a major automaker, and Tiffany makes Costco pay. I'm Marley Hall, and I'll have those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. A safety recall for a major automaker, and Tiffany makes Costco pay. Marley Hall has the latest on your money. Subaru is recalling nearly 600,000 vehicles because their windshield wiper motors can overheat, creating a fire risk. The recall affects some legacy and outback cars from the 2010 to 2014 model years. The company says it's unclear whether the problem has caused any fires or injuries. Stocks rallied after Thursday's losses to end the week in positive territory. The Dow gained 164 points. The Nasdaq added 42. Tiffany took on Costco for selling rings with its name on them and one big. A federal jury ruled Costco should pay five and a half million dollars for infringing on the jeweler's trademark. Costco argued it used the word Tiffany as a generic description of a ring setting, but the jury didn't buy it. Costco may also have to pay punitive damages. New legislation in California paves the way to test self-driving vehicles on some public roads with no driver inside. It's a first for the autonomous car industry. Previous laws only allowed testing when a person is in the driver's seat. That's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Marlou Hall. The world's highest and longest glass bridge has reopened in China. I didn't know there was such a thing, but well, it was closed earlier this month for safety upgrades after too many tourists tried to cross. Here's a story. It's got everyone acting like they're kids again. China's newest tourist attraction is a selfie dream come true. That is, if you can handle it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Is. It's okay, it's okay. The Zhangjiajie Grand Canyon Glass Bridge in central China is now the world's highest and longest, stretching more than 1,400 feet. I feel a little scared, but uh, you know, I'm strong enough. So now I'm Superman. <laughs> this scenery inspired the floating mountains in the blockbuster Avatar. Though the bridge could have been an inspiration for Hitchcock's Vertigo. <laughs> to protect the glass. Booties are required, high heels are banned, and tickets are limited. After opening in August, the bridge closed for a month because of overcapacity. Last year, a different glass walkway in China shut after a panel shattered. Once you get used to it, it's not that scary. No. Here, because Vice General Manager Joe Chen says they they're not taking any chances. Deal. There are three layers of the glass panels, and uh, each layer can actually withstand more than uh, 40 tons. To prove it, this summer officials had visitors try to smash the glass with a sledgehammer and ride a car over it just to drive home the point. Visitors pay $20 for the visit of walking on air. And if you want to come, the bridge is open all year. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Zhang Jiajie, China. There could be 20 layers of glass on that bridge. I'm not getting on it. Oh, it looks like fun. Yeah. Uh, recently, I went on a trip to, to Canada. Okay. Uh, if you remember that. Oh, yeah, those were beautiful pictures. Oh, fantastic. And I was on one of the world's highest suspension bridges, <gasps> like, a, like a swinging bridge. And let me tell you, it was terrifying. <laughs> Did you squeal? Uh, a little bit, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun to check that out. Forecast, not as much fun out there today with uh, some rain starting to wrap in. We've got some 50s to start the morning off, so a little cool, even for this time of year, just by a few degrees. We'll check forecast. We'll break it down for you today. A chance of showers and a few thunderstorms possible later today as highs will likely climb only into the mid and maybe some upper 60s. Nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. And we're back in just a moment with more news, weather, and entertainment right here on WKYT. See you then.